On my first day in the US, as a student at Williams College, I remember being thirsty. I had walked all across campus, up and down my residence hall, and not a single water filter. So much for the best college in America, I thought. <laughs> Until my roommate told me you could drink water directly from the tap. That's when I realized how ridiculously easy it is to get water in this country. See, where I come from, the only times you drink water from the tap are the night before a difficult mathematics exam. <laughs> Why? Well, because you can skip school the next day and have a good time with your friends. But the crazy part is that for 1.2 billion people, or one in seven across the world, the reality is much harsher than either you or I could relate to. I mean, these are the people spending their day looking for water and then going to bed wondering where the next cup of water would come from. Now, I'm glad everybody is sitting down because for the next minute or so, I want to take you on an emotional journey. Could I kindly ask everybody listening to please close your eyes? Got my eyes on you, close your eyes. I want you to imagine a loved one, preferably female, your wife, daughter, mother, sister, telling you what they were up to today. Now, instead of what they've told you, imagine they tell you this. At 6 a.m., I woke up before the sun got too hot and started walking. At 9 a.m., three hours later, I was still walking. At 11 a.m., I finally got to a stream of river, filled up my two jerry cans of water, rested 20 minutes, and then began my journey back home. At 1 p.m., I remember the sun being so hot and the warm sand passing through my sandals it was proof of it. At 3.45, I finally got home and ate. At 5.30, the boys in the family taught me what they learned at school that day. At 9 p.m., I went to bed, ready to get up and do it all over again the next day. Please open your eyes. What you just heard was a true story of a girl called Aisha, 13 years old, born in Ethiopia. And beyond spending most of her day collecting water, every time her and her family take a sip of water that is contaminated, they run the risk of contracting everything from cholera, typhoid, E. coli, and more. See, when you first hear about the water crisis or the solar water project, you may think it is just about water. But water is just the beginning. Because through water, we deliver a healthier future. Through water, we replace the four to five hours walking with time spent in school. And it is through water that we empower the countless women and children who time and time again are tasked with collecting water. So the question then is, what does a curious liberal arts student with a passion to solve a problem really do? What steps does he take in the Purple Valley? Well, he does what he knows best to do. He pulls out his laptop and writes a strongly worded research proposal. And in this instance, this research proposal turns into a grant application, and I get $10,000 from the Catherine Davis Foundation. I arrive in Pakistan, assemble a team with the mission to come up with a way of providing water for communities like those of Aisha's. 
ones where the water source is distant, contaminated, and that also lack basic infrastructure, including lack of electricity. So we turn to the most abundant natural resource, the sun. We survey existing technology, including solar panels, water filtration units, water pumps, and then repurpose them in a way that we could now use the solar energy to extract water from deep underground aquifers, which are below surface pockets of water. The resulting solution, which I'll share with you in a minute, can provide 2,000 people clean water every day for up to 25 years. And that work has grown from one community to two to now 13 across Pakistan, with 10 more upcoming in two new countries in 2019. Our work has grown into an international water charity with an incredible team of over 100 volunteers spread across three different continents. And we call ourselves Bunda Shams, or the Solar Water Project. With the words Bunda Shams quite literally meaning water from the sun. And the countless recognitions we've received so far are due to the hard work of this team. And I want to share with you a little bit more about this scalable and innovative design that we think could save millions of lives over the years to come. And I want to show you how we have thought outside the box by quite literally thinking of a large metal box. And the process is as follows. We've combined solar capability with smart electromechanics and enclosed our technology in this large metal box. The solar panels create the electricity, which powers a variable frequency drive, which is a mechanism to optimize for energy usage, which is used to extract water from underground. That water is then filtered using 0.1 micron ultrafiltration. The hollow fibers of these membranes contain U-shaped micropores that allow the water to pass through, trapping 99.9999% of all bacteria, including E. coli and typhoid and the ones we mentioned before. Thank you. And having identified a source of clean water, we installed the first solar water box in my ancestral village of Jur in Chakwal, Pakistan. This is what it looks like deployed. And this has to be one of the most important moments of my young life. See, 15 years ago, as a nine-year-old kid, I had fallen ill due to contamination from the same water well on top of which sits this brainchild of mine and my team's efforts, making sure that no nine-year-old has to ever fall sick due to water contamination in our village again. And that moment of joy, that moment of sheer joy and excitement is what my team and I have had the privilege of sharing every single time we go to a new community. And that's what keeps us going through those sleepless nights spent trying to optimize our efforts even further. Now, before I go further, and before I discuss with you one of the key accomplishments of this design, I want to take a poll of the audience. You've heard me speak about the water crisis for a good 10 minutes now. You've seen the construct of the solar box. How long knowing that it takes sometimes weeks and months to get these solutions deployed and have a community safe access to water, how long do you think it takes to get this solution deployed? I'll take three guesses. You can just shout it out. You get two months. A year. Sorry? An hour? Were you trying to make instant noodles? Come on, man. 
but you were the closest. It literally takes us seven minutes to get this solar box deployed. And you can see it on your videos right now. So in the last 10 minutes that I've been speaking, we could have comfortably deployed an additional solar box. And it is a thrill to see that with the flip of a button, like this gentleman right now, you can solve a decades-long crisis in minutes. Now, I, I like to joke with my friends that this solar box feels nothing like a child, you know, nothing less than a child to me. Because I've seen it grow from an idea to something semi-expensive and which takes half my time. And I don't have any real children of my own, which my mother is quick to remind me of. <laughs> but see, now every time she tells me about her sister's cousin's kid, Amina, who learned how to play the piano, I can tell her my child just learned how to read data. <laughs> and that's another cool feature of this box. We have access to live data from all the communities where we work. So every single day, we get to know the number of clean cups of water that were generated so that we can show to our stakeholders and donors the impact of every dollar spent. And that's the kind of radical transparency that we have been buying for for years. And it is to connect you with the communities that you're trying to service. And what have we learned then in our team about the impact that you can generate? Let's consider these numbers for a second. Each solar box costs $10,000 to construct, start to finish, all inclusive. It can serve, like we said, 2,000 people every single day. The UN recommends that one person drink eight cups of water every day. So with this solution, that's 16,000 cups of water generated every day. Now follow me here because within a year, that's 365 days, multiplied by 16,000, that's a staggering 5.8 million cups of water per year. So with $10,000, you can provide a clean cup of water to every single person in the five boroughs of New York City. That's an estimated 145 million cups of water in 25 years. By the way, each liter of water, with these estimates then, costs $0.0003. So 3,657 times less expensive than buying a dollar water bottle. And had we opted for those water bottles, you would have ended up creating 2,000 tons of plastic waste, taking 500 to 1,000 years to decompose. See, this level of impact is simply unprecedented. It just has not been done before. Which is why our team is excited to get up every morning to make the kind of difference that we are presenting today. And after four years of public debate, we are finally seeing that excitement replicated and mirrored by corporates and foundations. Bundeschamps won $150,000 from Goldman Sachs Gives this past summer, to bring our technology to 50,000 Rohingya refugees on the Bangladesh-Myanmar border. We're also working with communities in Ye region of South Sudan. And what these communities have in common is what we said at the top. They lack water, but they also lack infrastructure, hence perfectly suited to benefit from this long-lasting, durable, renewable way of getting water while also ensuring radical transparency. But we are nowhere close to being done. There are 1.2 billion people who still lack access to safe water, and our team wants to reach every single one of them. Now, 
this is where we, I, need your help in fighting for a world where access to clean water is a right and not a luxury afforded only to a few. And I'm speaking particularly to the folks my generation now. Let's face it. We have been failed repeatedly by those whom we put in charge of our planet. And innovative solutions like Moonless Shams, although powerful, are not meant as a replacement for a much broader, comprehensive, internationally coordinated water management response. They're there to stop the cancer from spreading by helping the immediately distressed. And it does not help when instead of coordinating that response, your representatives are busy doubting basic science. When your, when your advocates are citing an ongoing winter polar vortex as evidence that global warming is fake news. Let's not get complacent. Let's not get used to the propagation of conspiracy theories as science. Let's keep pushing our representatives to tell the truth about the true state of our climate so that they can advocate reform that will meaningfully change the course of years to come. Because if you truly believe in equity, if you truly believe in a safer future for generations to come, then your responsibility has to be proportional to the privilege you enjoy. And the quickest and easiest thing you can do starting today is to become resourceful within your own communities and the networks that you have. Because in order to scale disruptive solutions like the ones that you've heard of today, we need long-lasting partnerships, both at the business level, so between the corporates and foundations and nonprofits, but also at a personal level. We have been able to do the work together so far, every single person whose picture you have seen on these slides today, has been instrumental and crucial in pushing us and making sure that we are day in, day out, helping change lives with meaningful technology. And today is your chance to become part of that journey. Push the frontiers of the work we're doing. We invite you to critique us, work with us, and get us to the next stage. So the next time you open the tap of clean water, ask yourself, how will you turn this privilege into purpose? Thank you very much.